Welcome back to the Brothers Grim Dark, and a special welcome to all of our Timorous Beasties. Uh, so we've got some special members content, and this is one of the first ones of those. Um, so we've heard a lot of you are kind of curious about how I paint my Night Lord, so we thought that'd be a good painting tutorial to kind of add to the channel and uh, and yeah, show you kind of just how I go through the process of this, um, a little bit of freehand work, and uh, it's not actually as scary as you might think. So yeah, we're just going to crack on with that, and um, I hope you enjoy this. So. What we're going to be looking at today is this fella. Um, you can see him on camera. So this guy is just a normal legionnaire, but with a big old honking axe. What I've done is, uh, first off, he gets a base coat of Chaos Black, and that just goes all over. And then secondly, I take McCrag Blue, and I just spray that from the top down. So kind of getting a little bit of a Zenithal effect. He should be pretty much just all blue. And if you see him from the bottom, it's almost all black and we get a nice sort of gradient transition through there. So that's given us already some highlights and shades right off the bat, which is fantastic, makes our life a little bit easier. The only issue with this is, I really like McCrag Blue as a highlight color, it's got a nice sort of like purpliness to it, but in the shades and things, I think we need to get a little bit more of that sort of classic Night Lord's color in there. Um, so what I've done is I take uh, Night Lord's Blue, of course, and some contrast medium, and I mix, I dilate the Night Lord's Blue with about two to one contrast medium to Night Lord's Blue. And I'm basically going to give him almost kind of a glaze wash over the whole model with that. And that's just to kind of tint everything with that Night Lord's color. It'll knock the McCrag back a little bit and it'll make those really dark bits not just pure black, but have a little bit of the blue color in there too. So we're going to start with that. Once that's done, we'll move on to adding some of those highlights back. Um, but yeah, this is just kind of get that base tone in the right kind of area. So here I've mixed my Night Lord's Blue and Contrast Medium, and yeah, we're just going to give him a nice coat of this all over. And I tend to work sort of panel by panel on this so I don't get a too thick coat, is where we're mostly trying to get like a nice even coverage and not pulling up too much anywhere. Okay, so um, <clears throat> we've now given them a coat all over, I'm just going to let that dry now and uh, we'll see how he looks. Um, when that's all done, and we should be a little bit closer to having a nice kind of Night Lord's blue base coat there. We've also lost a little bit of the highlights and shades we had earlier. They're still there um, from that initial kind of Zenithal spray we did, but now we kind of really want to punch back and get some really bright um, kind of areas for like the lightning um, and the, some of those edge highlights. So, um, yeah, so first thing we're going to do is actually just bring back some of that McCrag blue color. Um, so I'm going to start with that, and I'm actually going to do most of this dry brushing. And later on, when I go back and do some of the freehand, I might touch up some edges and things. But to start with, um, we're actually just going to use a dry brush, makes things nice and fast and easy. We're doing kind of large batches of models. And I actually start off with a relatively large brush for this. Um, I'm using the Artist Opus, um, nice soft dry brushes. Um, but if you've got a nice, any sort of big soft dry brush will work. First off, I'm going to go around and sort of pick out the sort of edges of things like you would with any kind of power armor. But then I'm actually also going to use this um, to start sketching in where the lightning is going to go. So you can almost sort of think of this as kind of like the glow from the lightning. So as I kind of build up the model, I'm going to start working on that too. Okay, so that's about as far as I'll go with that for now, um, at least for the, for the edge highlights. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start thinking about, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. What I'm going to do next is start thinking about where I want the lightning to go. And I often use the pose of the model to kind of dictate that. So we're kind of reinforcing some of the shapes. So for this guy, I'm thinking that I mostly quite like the head-on view of him sort of charging, to sort of that view of him kind of charging along. So I'm thinking this leg that he has up front here, um, kind of reinforcing that with some lightning coming down the front of that leg, um, sort of a bolt kind of coming down that way. And then he also has this sort of empty shoulder pad on this side, so I think I might do some lightning coming across the shoulder pad just to make it a little bit more interesting there as well. So we'll start with that. And just again, I'm going to use a dry brush and we're going to almost like stipple it on um, to kind of create some of that, those shapes. And I'm just going to sort of stipple this sort of shape coming up the leg here. And this will be the, the main kind of glow from the lightning. So I don't have to be super precise or anything from this, I'm just kind of creating the, the area that the lightning is going to go inside. Next, I'm basically going to do the same thing, but with um, 
Gene Stealer Purple and just focusing a little bit more on the very highlights for this. So really focusing on the edges and the center of the kind of lightning area so where it's going to be a bit brighter. And then after that, we're going to go in with a normal brush and kind of fill in the shapes. But for now, we're going to stick with the dry brush. Um, I'm actually going to continue to use the same size dry brush, just being a little bit more careful about kind of where I'm, I'm building it up. Okay, so I think we're getting pretty close there now. Um, so that's kind of the end of the, the dry brushing section, but now we've kind of got some nice edge highlights on our armor plates and we've got um, the kind of areas where we want that lightning to be already kind of defined. So now we're just gonna be sort of filling that in with some lines um, to give that, that real shape of the lightning. So you can see down this leg here, we've got that kind of bright area that goes all the way down the side. And then same on this side here. Right, so now we get to do the, some of the fun stuff. We're going to work on the lightning bolts themselves. Uh, so we're going to go back to that Gene Stealer purple, um, but this time I'm going to work on the wet palette. So for this, I just, I'm basically just drawing lines. Um, I usually start at one kind of end of a panel and work my way down it. Um, you know where you're kind of wanting to go to um, because you've got those areas kind of sketched in earlier. So you're kind of just joining from a top point to a bottom point. That's usually how I like to work and um, kind of zigzagging your way down along the way. So I'm going to start at the top of this point here. That seems like a good place. And just start drawing some lines. Okay, so hopefully you can see that along the, the leg there. And then same thing for the shoulder. I'm going to start with the leg and work my way up for this one. I think that'll just be a little bit easier. So it's going in this corner. And then now I've got that bolt that comes up here, I can kind of see where it would join the shoulder. So I think about there to kind of keep that, that line going. So I'm just going to start on that shoulder and work my way over the top. Now, because the shoulder is quite a big area, this is one where I might want to add a few more different sort of forks of the lightning uh, to just kind of give it more interest and take up a little bit more of that space. Now I'm thinking like around about here, on around the middle of the shoulder pad would be a good point to kind of fork this off and maybe go just a little bit more upwards the other way.
Okay, so now we've got those kind of main lines in place. I'm gonna go back and just look for a few areas where I can kind of add a few more forks. And I quite like to do ones where they actually join back up so you get almost like a sort of zigzag loop um, to make it look like lightning sort of forked and maybe gone off in one direction or another and then kind of rejoined itself. So I'm just gonna kind of look for areas where I maybe did a slightly wider tangent and um, maybe see if I can do the same sort of thing on the other side. The, right now, because we're using the same color, it'll, it'll maybe look a little bit weird. You've kind of got these loops but later on, we're going to brighten up just maybe one side of that and it will kind of create this effect that the lightning has maybe shifted and you're kind of seeing a ghost from um, where the lightning was in the past. So for example, here on the leg, we've got this kind of that line that comes across this way. I think I'm going to go the other way a little bit um, and just kind of create an extra little fork there. So we're going to go... And join that up. Now we've got this kind of little loop on the leg. And same thing on the other side, maybe across here. Maybe here. So that's kind of the, the first step. We've kind of got our glow defined. We've got that first set of shapes of the lightning in place. So now we're going to start highlighting it and uh, really getting that to pop out a little bit more. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, Blue Horror. I don't try and copy exactly what I did on the previous step when I go and fill it in with a brighter color. I really like to have this idea that the lightning is still moving and in flux. Um, so I kind of like to have multiple lines sort of overlapping with different colors and textures. So you get this idea that it is kind of moving and there's a, but there's one sort of prominent arc kind of throughout the whole thing. So I'm going to use the purple as a guide, but I'm actually not going to worry too much if I deviate off of it a little bit. Um, I'm just trying to create a little bit of that movement um, as we kind of go through here. Um, but you're going to, what, one thing I want to start doing now is sort of figuring out where the dominant path is and mostly focus that. So there'll still be some purple lines underneath, um, but I won't do all of them um, with the blue horror. And you'll kind of see as I kind of go here how that will work. Starting at this point here. And just, and you can almost sort of stipple a little bit as you're really trying to create not this the most consistent um, line throughout this you almost want there to be points where it's a bit brighter and a bit more saturated um, where the energy is maybe a little bit stronger and then kind of focus that on those points where there's maybe a junction or a kind of major area So yeah, you can kind of see on the leg here, we've now got this main line defined, but there's even a few areas which are a little brighter than others in there. And again, almost dotting, stippling to kind of create those, and the knot a little bit more variation in the line as we're kind of going. In this case, the purple one that I drew in earlier goes quite wide that way. I'm actually going to draw a little bit through more of the middle, then have it join up again. So starting there, and then going almost past it, and cutting back in again. This is really fun. You can get as creative as you kind of want with this. You can go for like really wild lines to make it look like lightning's forking about all over the place, or you can keep it a little bit more consistent, like it's just one big energy ball. You can kind of play around and figure out what um, works best for you. I find on different models, I kind of do different things. If it's like a larger surface area, I might want to have a bit more wiggle and movement in there. Uh, whereas on other models, I might want it to look just kind of like a straight bolt coming, coming right through. And again, kind of dotting it a little bit in areas to get a little bit more brightness in some spots and others. So on this shoulder, because it's more of a major kind of area, I'm actually gonna draw a few lines between those to kind of show the, the energy sort of for, lashing back and forth between these kind of two major currents. So I think I'll go from here. And just zigzag that down there. And then you get a sort of major arterial point where these are all meeting up.
okay, just one more step for the lightning, really. And that's to just go and add a few little spots of white uh, where those major areas are. Again, I really like to have my lightning not look super consistent all the way through. I like to have it look like there's different areas where the energy is kind of flowing and it's brighter in those kind of spots. So um, we're going to do uh, kind of white in a few of those areas just to kind of really make them pop out. But we're not going to do the whole streaks like we did before. We're just going to pick a few little areas and just really put some spots in there. Um, to get the those kind of brightest energy areas. And for this, I'm using actually the um, Pro Acryl, Pro Acryl, how do we call that? Pro Acryl. Um, titanium white, I find it's just a really nice solid white. Um, has a nice consistency to it, but whatever white you've kind of got handy is all good for this. Uh, so going back to this this major leg, probably this joint here, or this inter where it hits the edge, and then where it forks there, I think it'd be a good spot maybe where it comes back in again. Um, just to get, again, add a few more areas in there. And you can kind of look for those areas where in the previous step where you were kind of stippling in the blue horror, if there's a few of those areas that really pop out, you can just exaggerate those more by sticking a little spot of white inside of them. Let's put that spot in there. And then a little bit further up, let's look one maybe in here. Yeah, so that's most of the lightning done on that leg now. Hopefully you can see that well. Uh, so yeah, we've kind of got a few different pathways, a few different uh, courses of the lightning, and a few different brighter spots. So I think that's that's pretty good for a model like this. Uh, so I'm just going to go finish up that on the other areas too and show you what that looks like. So in the shoulder pad, because it's a slightly bigger area again, and then we had a few more of those currents, I'm adding a little bit more white. Um, but again, really focusing on the areas where it's either sort of entering or exiting the, the shoulder pad, so on the corners there, and also around this kind of major intersection of the, these bolts of lightning where you'd imagine it'd be brighter. So with that, um, that's pretty much it for the, the Midnight Clad armor. Um, on a maybe a more special character or you know hero or something, I might go and use kind of the colors on the palette right now, the purple and the, the blue horror, to kind of pick out a few more of those edge highlights, um, to just you know clean things up a little bit or you know give them a little bit extra extra love. But on sort of infantry models like this, that's really about as far as I would go. Uh, you really don't want to overdo the sort of edge highlights and things as you might on a more traditional model um, because you want the lightning to really be the thing that captures the attention. So I tend not to go too overboard with that. So, um, so I'll just do one little pass over so you can see how he's looking. So we've got that leg there, that bolt coming up the side on there. And then on the other side, bolt of lightning coming up there and all the way up to the shoulder pad. So that's that's it for now. I hope this was super helpful. Um, if it's uh, if you learned anything from this or got any other ideas, uh, let us know down below. I'm gonna go finish this guy off now and take some uh, pictures of him, which you'll probably be seeing at the moment um, of him once he's all done. If you got any other questions about how I do my Night Lords uh, or any other particular pieces, let us know. Um, we can do some other kind of tutorials on that at a future date. Um, but uh, yeah, we thought doing the lightning uh, that's the part I enjoy the most about doing the Night Lords. It's, it's their signature thing. Um, and it's really fun to do. It's not particularly difficult from a freehand perspective, and it gives you just practice at brush control as well. Um, so I really like it just as a um, bit of a different kind of expression. Every model ends up a little bit different, and um, it's really good practice. So hope you enjoyed this. Uh, let us know what else you'd like to see. And uh, yeah, join us again for more content on the Brothers Grimdark very soon.